Welcome to today's talk session. My name is Deidre Moss, and I'm the host of Can We Talk? I'm an educator, motivator, and a talk connoisseur. In our session today, and since May, since Nurses Month is observed May 2nd through May 31st, and Nurses Day is observed May 12th, we thought it would be fitting to dedicate this session to talk about the field of nursing and other related topics. So today we've invited Christian DeVoe and Gino Petit home. I, I didn't mess your name up, but um, they're here. <laughs> they're here to help us dissect this topic. So at this time, I will pass the virtual mic to our guests so that they can introduce themselves. So I'll start with uh, Mr. DeVoe and then we'll come to you. Um, Gino. Thank you. Hi, right, thank you very much. A pleasant good afternoon, everybody. My name is Kristan DeVoe, and I am a registered nurse here at Princess Margaret Hospital under the Public Hospitals Authority. I've been a registered nurse since December 2019 and licensed with the Bahamas Nursing Council. Presently, I'm a registered nurse deployed to the neonatal intensive care unit, where I've been for the past two years. Thank you. We come to you, Gina. We just okay. need you to unmute yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. DeVoe. Yeah, just unmute You're yourself. Welcome. All right. Good um, evening, good everyone. everyone. I'm, I'm Gino Perry Holmes. I'm also a registered staff, staff nurse for the Public Hospital Authority. I'm employed in the medical area, specifically Med Surge West. Thank you so much for those introductions. And so we'll get into our talk. But before we begin, um, if you just joined us, like and share this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel using the links on our page. We need your support to continue these talks. Also, if there's something that you think we should be talking about, feel free to let us know. We want to hear from you. With that, let's get into our talk. Can we talk nursing? And so, um, we just want to get a little bit into your backgrounds, Mr. DeVoy. I know you said you're attached to the neonatal unit. And um, so we just want to talk about um, getting into your background. So I'll start with you again, Mr. DeVoy and um, Mr. Um, Gino. Okay. Um, well, I am eager and I'm proud to say that I am um, from being in Grandstown and I am the only child out of five children to have went to university and graduated with a degree. Um, I embarked on my journey at the University of the Bahamas, which was then the College of the Bahamas, where I graduated in 2019 with my Bachelor of Science degree in nursing. Since then, um, I've been employed with PMH, like mentioned before, after becoming licensed with the Bahamas Nursing Council. And I always had that passion for nursing. And um, as the interview go on, you would really, really um, hear that passion. Thank you. I could definitely hear that passion. Uh, Mr. Petty Home. All right, All similar, right similar to, to Mr. DeVoe. DeVoe. I'm, I'm also, also a native of Nassau. 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 Um, specifically lived in the Centerville area most of my life. Um, I'm just like just Mr. Like DeVoe, DeVoe. Uh, went to the University of the Bahamas, Bahamas as, well, as well, where I graduated a year after him. Um, got my bachelor's in nursing. I was employed with PHA in 2022. Thank you. Thank you so much. And so we'll get into our next question. So as it pertains to your career, and it's so good to see young men <laughs> sitting yeah, before yes. me. <laughs> So your career, how did you get into the field of nursing? Um, so Petty Home, we'll start with you first and then we'll come to you, Mr. DeVoe. Well, how did I get into the field of nursing? It would have been, well, I had a passion when my, my father became ill and I noticed the genuine care that the, the thing about um, um, but I saw the genuine care that the nurses provided, regardless of his background or his economic status. And then that um, burned the fire that made me wanted to you know, enter into that field, seeing that 
people could just give that care regardless of anything. So because of that, I decided to embark on that journey. And then I entered the field. And as I became um, more inclined to learning more about nursing, I realized that this is the career for me. And I can make a difference in somebody's life um, based on the skills that I possess. And that's basically how I became a nurse and what brought me into nursing. Thank you, thank you, Mr. DeVoe. How did you, you know, end up in this career? Um, particularly, as I mentioned earlier, you know, being a young man. Um, I, I, we, we can't yeah. hear. Um, no volume on our side. Okay, okay. Go ahead, Mr. DeVoe. How did you enter this, this career? Okay, so, Ever since I was a child, I always had passion for healthcare, and I had a lot of family friends who were in healthcare who act as motivators um, to me to join the healthcare profession. I entered high school, and there was an opening and an opportunity to join the nursing cadet program that I proudly joined when I was in high school. And I was the only male from my high school at that time who was a part of the nursing cadet. Um, we were given the opportunity in the nursing cadet to enter the hospital and the government clinics and work alongside with nurses. And through that experience, I really had the opportunity to evaluate my um, career interests and getting that great experience through the nursing cadet program, you know, really helped me to choose to study nursing. And also at that particular time, that was the most affordable way for me to attain a university education because my parents couldn't have afforded to send me anywhere else. You know, so being in the nursing cadet, that gave me first preference to the then nursing grant scholarship, which is now the government tertiary grant. So I entered the University of Bahamas and here I am today. Thank you. And so, yeah. thank you. Thank Mr. Pettyholm, can you hear me now? I can. Okay, great. So you talked about your experience in seeing your, your father and how he was treated um, when he, you know, came to um, seek medical attention. And Mr. DeVoe, you talk about being channeled through the nursing cadet program, um, yes. which would have led you into the field of nursing. Um, and just want to congratulate you again in being males. Thank you. Thank um, you. Yeah, I congratulate you again in being males and representing the field of nursing. And so that brings us to another point about the importance of the field of nursing. And as we consider um, going through different events um, and having to basically go through a whole pandemic and seeing the importance of the healthcare profession. Um, can you tell us about the importance of, of nursing and, and particularly um, nursing month in recognizing the field of nursing. Um, I'll start with you, Mr. DeVoe, and, and come to you, Mr. Petty Home. You can jump right in once, once he's done. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you for that question. Um, I don't think any medical institution can function without the presence of nurses. If we ought to conduct an experiment and allow all of the nurses to sit home for a week from the hospital, I'm positive we will have mass fatality. So just by that um, scenario, that shows you how important, you know, nurses are to a medical institution, more specifically the Princess Margaret Hospital. And I believe for the hard work, you know, and dedication that, 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 that nurses contribute to their, their profession and, and, and the organization, we ought to be at some point, you know, recognized and, and, and rewarded, you know, for our hard work. Um, similar to Mr. DeVoe's sentiment, is very important to hire. Just need you to un unmute yourself. Uh, yeah. uh, sim uh, similar to. Uh, or what we'll do, um, you can. You could open up. Um, you can mute your mic, Mr. Petty Home and Mr. DeVoe, can you open up your mic? Thank you so much. Okay, you can continue, Mr. Petty Home. Thank you. All right, similar to Mr. DeVoe's sentiments, 
it's important to recognize the field nursing. Um, simply based on the countless hours that nurses um, spend with patients, and um, they are sometimes you know take on the patients' needs and neglect their family just to make sure that patients are uh, uh, feel welcome and confident. Like for example, during hurricanes, when individuals are home with their family. Uh, nurses um, take that time to you know work these countless hours with their patients and try to ensure that you know we get the proper care. And even similar to COVID, uh, while other people may be scorned or scared of it, nurses took that thing head on. So it's important to just highlight and also by with nurses months by showing some type of appreciation, nurses feel some type of motivation from that. Thank you for sharing that um, and talking about uh, the importance of, of, of our healthcare providers. Well, specifically, we're talking about nurses. So um, thank you for sharing that. Um, so we want to talk about the challenges. You talk about, you know, nurses having to work through some very challenging times um, when we had a, a pandemic and we have uh, those natural disasters and you have to work through those challenging events. Um, so what, what are some of the challenges that you face? In your career, or any challenges for that matter, uh, I'll start with you, uh, Mr. Devoe, and then you, Mr. Petty Home. Thank, thank you. Okay, I would say, um, personally speaking, personally, I would say uh, number one for me is um, job satisfaction, and then number two is a gender bias. Although back in 2000, that um, gender bias against male nurses and um, to female nurses had somewhat been eradicated. We still have some um, some of that lingering round. So that's one of my major challenge. And also, like I mentioned, firstly- well, Hold on, can you glaze over that a little bit? When you say gender bias, what are you really speaking about? Are like some persons to... still, I've had the experience, you know, and very recently, um, very um, latest as last month, I had an experience, you know, whereby some persons really, still not accepting you as a male nurse because- Oh, you, you're referring to patients? I'm, I'm preferring to, the, referring to patients and sometimes your staff members, you okay. know, because when we talk about nursing as it relates to the patients, nursing is way more intimate than medicine, all right? So when you would see, for example, I'll take the maternity area, you, 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 you would question and you would say, well, we have male doctors on the maternity ward who deliver babies, et cetera. You know, and then when a male nurse, you know, put themselves forward in the same ward, they, they may be looked at differently. It's simply probably because of the job description that nursing is way more intimate than medicine. So that's what that, that those are the two major challenges for me personally. And so you said recently you found that it's a little bit is the bias is decreasing a little yeah, bit. The bias the, the bias isn't as strong as it was back then before 2000, but it's still lingering around now. All right. And I think together we must we must work on eradicating that bias. All right. Male nurses, we are here and we are here to expand. So you're going to have to get used to male nurses working in the hospital. All right. OK, Mr. Petty, you, you want to add to that? Any challenges you find in your field? Well, like any of any other institutions, we do face challenges as well. And one of the most highlighted challenges I've seen worldwide is just the shortage of nurses. Um, and even though we do face these challenges of shortage of nurses, it allows me, like new nurses, to actually step to the forefront. And um, my superiors allow me, us as new nurses, to actually manage the ward. So if we are allowed to display our skills due to the shortages, but, and so we manage it well. And they put our trust in the new nurses. So even though we may face our challenges, it allows us to step up due to the challenges. Thank you for those comments. And I just want to uh, congratulate or applaud mainly your superiors um, or your supervisors in highlighting those male nurses. Um, so I just want to applaud them for that. And for those who may be listening and those who may be viewing in, if you have any questions or comments, 
um, about these young men representing the field of nursing, please feel free to share under our videos. I will def under the video, I will definitely uh, get to your comments. I, I, I've been checking in periodically. Um, and so we come to, to stigma. We want, we want to talk about some, some, some other things. Um, and so, you know, sometimes we see that there is a prevailing stigma um, uh, uh, as it pertains to, to nurses or maybe healthcare workers to that extent um, of, of, of PMH being unhelpful. So even maybe even uncaring or maybe having a little bit of a, a, a poor attitude to it. So what are, what, are, what are your views on that? And also, what are you doing to address that stigma or that prevailing um, belief that people have? Um, Mr. Mr. Pettyholm, you could start first and then uh, Mr. DeVoe, you can jump in. Um, so yes, I'm aware of the stigma that um, healthcare workers are uncaring. It's all over Facebook and what's not. And because of that, it, it actually hampers the nursing patient relationships. So individuals that come into the hospital for the first time, they have this anxiety that, oh, they're going to be treated some type of way uh, based on all of these rumors. But for me, uh, I don't allow that stigma to hamper or interfere with the way I provide quality care for my patients. And when they, by me displaying the quality care that I give, um, it just allows me and it allows me and the pay, it also allows the patient to see that, okay, they may be wrong. And I try to work to the best of my ability to show patients that, okay, genuine care and this is, this stigma may be wrong. It's not every nurse can I just have this hasty generalization. And by me doing that, I show an example to also my coworkers and encourage my coworkers to do the same. Thank you for sharing that, uh, Mr. DeVoe. Yes, well, firstly, I'd like to say that that stigma has been around since before me and my colleagues became registered nurses. I've been in that stigma since I was a child, honestly. But what I would say is that I always do my best to adhere to nursing code of ethics and be highly professional when it comes to delivering my nursing care to my patients and their families because I don't think anybody would just present themselves to a hospital out of curiosity unless they're insane, all right? So when our patients, our clients come to our front doors, they are either in pain, they are sick, they are anxious, and they are in, they are in fear of the unknown. So the least I think they deserve when they present to us is a compassionate, caring nurse, hence our slogan here at Princess Margaret Hospital, we care. On the other hand, if you say that you are in pain, you are sick, you are in fear of the unknown and you're anxious, you ought to be humble. And the least I think us nurses deserve here at Princess Margaret Hospital is respect, all right? Because respect is not a gift, it must be earned. It doesn't matter what your title is, it doesn't matter what your race is, it doesn't matter what your beliefs are, you know, it doesn't matter what your gender is, we all must find that common ground of respect, all right? So therefore I remain 100% independent and impartial when it comes to dealing with the stigma against nurses at Princess Margaret Hospital. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Mr. Petty, whom you talk about um, showing them that you, you bring a professional, your professionalism, um, to, to the table. Um, Mr. DeVoe, it goes goes both ways, you know, respect, yes. respect each other, respect the profession. Um, so thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Yes, um, so welcome. we come to, to advice um, for younger persons or anybody in general, they are looking at the nursing profession as a profession for themselves. So what advice would you give to them? What advice would you give to individuals who may be seeking to study to become a nurse? They wanna be a nurse. And even for those, because I, I do know persons who are within um, that transition, studying nursing, and they may feel discouraged a little bit, um, maybe taxing on them. So that's that question is twofold for those interested 
in becoming a nurse, what advice would you give to them? And also for those who are already in that, in, in the journey to becoming one, but they may feel a little bit discouraged because of, you know, all that comes with it and the challenges. What advice would you give to those persons? So I'll start with you, Mr. DeVoe, and then come to you, Mr. Petty Moon. Thank you. Well, firstly, I'd say that nursing is a very excellent profession. That's why I would have chosen it. And I will also say that nursing is not a walk in the park. Nursing is not a joke. You know, nursing is a very serious profession that requires a lot of time, commitment, you know, and it requires passion, all right? So I would say to those persons who are thinking of becoming nurses and who are currently studying, that just follow your passion, follow your goals, and, you know, just stay at your future. Always continue to professionally develop yourself. Don't make your career goals and choice based on a person or a particular place. The world is a big place. Nursing is a global thing. You can nurse here at Princess Margaret Hospital or you can nurse at Jackson Memorial in, in Florida. All right. So you take control over your future and you stare it. You know, when you hear the voice of God over your life, you move. All right. So, but nursing is an excellent profession. We have our challenges. The challenges are always going to be there. You know, you just have to steer your way um, as you wish through it. All right. And you have to, to cope. Um, I would go on to say that nursing is a noble profession and that that individual have to be generally, generally honest with themselves and realize that, yes, it is a heavy task, but also that they have to shape their own pathway when it comes to nursing. Yes, they could take advice from everyone else, but you got to really dictate. Um, the avenue that you want to move in because obviously nursing is very dynamic. We have very different um, fields of nursing. It's pediatric, it's, so it's not it's not stagnant, it's dynamic. And research is ongoing. So like Mr. DeVos said, uh, you can nurse anywhere in the world. The skill is the skill you could utilize this in your personal life. You can utilize it with your families. So I would tell them that to keep on going, that this is a very rewarding um profession it's like a ministry uh with patients it's like you may not remember each and every one patients but then when you touch the life of somebody it's like it's amazing when a patient could come into the hospital near death and you played a part in that role of you know rehabilitating this patient that they are able to go back in society so it's a very rewarding profession thank you Thank you for, for those comments. Um, just looking at the looking at the, the comments under the video, um, Miss Santi and Smith says, great job, Gino. Um, Miss Rose says, great job, Gino. Miss Miss Smith says, great job, guys. And Miss Davis says, thank you for showing PMH in a positive light. And I just want to thank you for giving that advice and reminding us that the field of nursing is, um, as you would have mentioned, Mr. Petty Home is dynamic and there's different areas. So you may not be stuck in one area, it's a broad, it's a broad field. And also you talk about um, the rewarding nature and having persons come back who may have been in a desperate situation and they were, would have been re rehabilitated and you find reward in the fact that you were able to help somebody else. Um, and so I just want to get back to um, any additional comments as we wind down. Is there anything else you would like to add to um, this talk today? I'll start with you, uh, Mr. DeVoe. Well, I'd just like to make a comment, you know, and say that nurses are honorable. You know, nurses are respectful and nurses are leaders. You know, so I would hope that, you know, the public, especially our um, live viewers, you know, if you are members of the public, you know, would actually look at us in a different light. We're not, we're not there to harm you. We're only here to help you, you know, but you know, we have to find that common ground always, which is respect. And you'd find that once you be respectful and humble, that things will go totally different. All right. I think during this nurses month, we ought to celebrate carnival style. All right. To lift the nurses spirit. Thank you. Hold on, you 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 just dropped that jewel right there. You want to celebrate which style? Carnival style, you know. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes. All right. Okay. All right. You can come in, Gino. 
I would just like to say thank you for this platform, first and foremost. And secondly, if anyone has a nurse in their life, highlight them, show them some type of appreciation. Because nursing is, like I said, no easy, easy feat. And you know, it's good to show appreciation. It goes a long way. Yes, and Ms. Moss, I'd just like to add one more comment before we leave. Um, it was a pleasure meeting you um, virtually for the first time. And it was a very, very great idea to really, really have this talk today and to highlight us male nurses because persons think that um, nurses are ought to be female, you know? <laughs> Yeah, and, and it's way, it's not that. We have a lot of male nurses, you know, and I am one, and we ought to be um, uplifted and highlighted more, all right? Male nurses exist, all right? Thank you. Thank you, and, and as, as Mr. Pettyholm would have mentioned, it's increasing and male nurses um, do not intend to go anywhere. So it may be more, more coming on board. And it's good to give a face. Um, to a representation for maybe young young boys who may be interested in even joining the field. So it's good to represent and um, let them know that you're here, that you male nurses are there in the field. Um, and so I just wanna jump back again to the comments um, of Ms. Um, Bethel, excellent male representation. Um, Ms. Smith, she says you, you both did a great job, Ms. Um, Ronell, my boy, um, Mr. DeVoe. Um, so I just want to, you know, again, mm -hmm. highlight uh, and, and applaud your supervisors for highlighting um, the men. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, and so, Gino, you talked about, Mr. Pettyholm, sorry, you talked about um, highlighting the nurses in your lives, you know, for persons who um, you may know, you, you may be aware of, you may have some of them in your family, highlight them you know, because they, they do a job, they do, they do a great job, they do a dynamic job. Mr. DeVoe, you talk about nurses being honorable, um, being respectful yes. and being leaders. Um, so I wanna thank you as well for mentioning that. Yes, Again, my pleasure. And um, as we uh, wrap up, I just want you just uh, again, if you could just go back over, um, if you want just briefly how you would have entered this field. Uh, as we as we close out the session, thank you. Oh, we we we'll start with you, Mr. Duro. Thanks. Okay. Yes, I'd reiterate that the nursing cadet program for all the high school students. If we have any parents here, if we have any high school students here on this live, inquire. You know, with your guidance counselor at your child's high school about the nursing cadet program because it's an excellent program put on by the Ministry of Health that really spared my future, guided me here to become a, a male registered nurse, you know, and even after doing my job training in 2013, I actually volunteered at Princess Margaret Hospital for two years, you know, two years of free service at Princess Margaret Hospital. That's how passionate. What, what I program was. was that? That was the nursing cadet program? Well, it wasn't the nursing cadet program. I went on to do job training and after job oh. training, I asked one of the nursing supervisors permission just to come and, you know, assist oh, wow. in work. I did that from 2013 to 2015. Sometimes so you took the initiative on your own to work Yes, at? on my own. For two okay. years, I volunteered here. Oh, wow. Okay. That's wow. Wow. All right. You could continue. about the nursing cadet um, program. It's a great program. You know, don't be discouraged. Princess Margaret Hospital, we are still here to serve you and we care. All right. And I find that a lot of persons of the general public just go with the bandwagon appeal. All right. They have one bad experience with one nurse and then all 500 nurses in the hospital are animals. We can't operate like that. We have to be more mature than that and be more, you know, humane than that. You know, nurses, you know, here we, we care. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. My introduction to nursing was quite different. Um, I actually just went straight on into the UB University. So um, with that, uh, because uh, I was unfortunate to join the nursing cadet, I didn't let that defer me from not completing my goal or reaching my goal. So I just went directly after graduating high school, uh, work, work for a while to save up in order to you know, attend the University of the Bahamas, and then eventually entered into uh, the nursing program. And here I am today. So we can use his avenue as well as my avenue as well. So there's not one path of getting to 
Yes, and yes, well, that, and that, Prince, that's Prince hold on. You, you drop that jewel and you're walking away. Don't drop that. Hold on, go go back <laughs> to that. Let's go back. What, what can you repeat that again, please? That's not one part of getting to attain your goal. Powerful, that's powerful. Awesome. Yes, and perseverance is key. You know, perseverance is key. You must persevere. All right. Thank and you, I, I, thank you. And Ms. Moss, ex ahead. excuse me, but I would hate go to leave ahead, it or share this story. You look like you want to preach you know, today, go ahead. Remember I told you that I was from being in Grandstown, right? Now, we had no internet connection in our home when I was studying, all right? So the University of the Bahamas Library closed at 12 midnight, and I was there until 12.01. You know, wow. typing my nursing care up. plans. Yeah, <laughs> typing my nursing care plans and making sure that I got all of my care plans out in time because I was on a mission, you know, and I accomplished that mission. All right. So it doesn't matter if you don't have any internet connection in your home. All right. Utilize the library. All right. And you will succeed. That's determination. You were you yeah. didn't have it at, at, at homes, but you went where you could find um, the tools and resources that you needed to get yes. what you needed to get accomplished. And yes, so congratulations to you. Thank um you. looking at um someone uh Monique is saying family Allen nurses are also present on this platform. But kudos to the male nurses. Um I don't know if you want to say anything about the family Allen nurses. Yeah I would say you know we send our shout outs um happy first of all happy nurses month to the family island nurses. You know, um, I haven't had the opportunity yet to, vi to visit all of our, our family islands, but I've, I've been down in, in Harbor Island and I've seen the clinic down there. And, you know, a while driving um, my golf cart, someone screamed out my name. And I thought I was getting away from people that knew me, but someone right in Harbor Island screamed my name out. And it was one of my colleagues who I studied with, you know, and we spoke for a long time. They, they were telling me about their experience and how they enjoy working on the family island. You know, the family island have their challenges as well. You know, you know, you can't be successful without some challenge, you know, but you know, they were enjoying themselves and they spoke highly about it. I awesome, say the awesome, family awesome. Islands, nurses that they are very resourceful. From what I've heard from patients, how they MacGyver, whatever resources they have on the family island. So I commend them on their nursing. Awesome. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that and getting to our comments. Ms. Moxie says, male nurses rock, very humble and professional. Nurses, nurses, your services are appreciated. So proud of you guys. Awesome. And very proud of our male nurses you rock. And so if there's no further commentary, Mr. DeVoe, you, you want to add something? Because you, you, was, you was preaching today. No, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let us wrap up at this time. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so you. much. So you you shared some very powerful um some very powerful jewels. You talk about determination, yes. and, um, even with the challenges that you may have, and you talk about um, nursing. It can be challenging, um, but that that's a part of you getting to where uh, you need to go. Um, and so I want to thank you for sharing that. And you spoke about um, your background and where you would have come from. You came from the Brain and Grantstown community. Um, but you found ways to utilize tools and resources to get um, what you needed to get accomplished. So I want to thank you for sharing that. And yes. also, Mr. Petty, whom you talk about um, what would have inspired you to enter the field of nursing and seeing how your father was treated despite their background, economic or social, uh, social background, you um, respected how he was treated and that would have motivated you um, to getting into this field. So I just want to thank you again. Uh, for being a part of the session and I want to applaud your supervisors for highlighting the male um, aspect, uh, male representing males in the field of nursing at, at the uh, Princess Margaret Hospital. Um, and so we will bring the session, um, we will bring the session to a close. I want to thank you uh, for all those who are on this platform with us today, our family, Allen Nurses. Happy Nurses Month. Uh, we appreciate you. We salute you uh, for what you bring to our medical uh, field. Uh, so thank everyone for listening to this talk. I would like to thank our guest, Gino Pettyholm. I hope I got your name right. I That's got right. it. All right. Christian DeVoe. Yes, my pleasure. All right. Um, anything else you want to share? Are you good? <laughs> We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good.
<laughs> I would like to thank our viewers for listening in. Like our page for future notifications of upcoming thoughts. Comment under this video. Let us know your thoughts and let us know what you want us to talk about. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, Can We Talk? Follow us on Instagram and Twitter using the addresses provided on our page. Happy Nurses Month. And remember, yeah. let's think, talk to um, Mr. Deville. You said we, we need to have, have a carnival, right? There's a carnival, you know? <laughs> A kind of a uplifting. All right. All right. So let's think, talk to. Thank you so much.